Welcome to tonight's program. Tonight we have a very special guest. His name is Ebenezer Bryce, and he founded the Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah. So let's bring him on stage. Hello, Mr. Mr. Bryce, how are you doing today? Oh, fantastic, fantastic. fantastic. Are, yes, you ready? are you ready to get asked tough questions? Why, certainly. All right, well, we'll get right to that as soon as we come back from this commercial break, and then we'll start asking Mr. Bryce here some questions. Stay tuned. Welcome back, everybody. So we're still here with Mr. Bryce of Bryce Canyon National Park. So, Mr. Bryce, how exactly did uh, Bryce Canyon National Park eventually come to be? Well, it's an interesting story, to say the least. It was around 1920, and around that time, they decided to make my park a national park. And where is this canyon located? Well, that's in Utah. Utah, okay. Yes, yes, sir. Now, when the accommodations were made for my canyon, Bryce's Canyon, and along the Ponsagon Plateau, and unfortunately... Uh, in the year 1923, legislation decided to make it Utah National Park. So you were kind of upset about I was that. a little bit upset. I mean, after having my name in it at first and then losing it. But fortunately enough, my good pal Warren G. Harding, the president, decided to make it Bryce Canyon National Park in the year 1928. Oh, so then you got your name back and the canyon was still the same. It was pretty time. exciting. We had quite the party. Mr. Bryce, tell us about the size of the National Park. Well, it's approximately 37,000 acres. That much? I wish I owned that much land. Most do. And uh, all of it is colorful rock formations and desert wonderland. Really? And you said it's in the southwest part of these? Right, parts? southwestern. Down Towards there. like Arizona? Okay. Right. Well. We're going to take another commercial break. When we come back, we'll be discussing the geology of Bryce Canyon National Park and some of its features. So stay tuned. Welcome back, viewers. We are continuing our program on Bryce Canyon National Park with Mr. Ebenezer Bryce, the founder. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the rock formations? Well, Bryce Canyon National Park was named after one of a series of horseshoe-shaped amphitheaters that on the eastern edge of Ponsagon Plateau in southern Utah. Uh, there was erosion in the area that shaped colorful Clairon limestones, sandstones, and mudstones into thousands of spires, fins, pinnacles, and mazes. These unique formations are whimsically arranged and tinted with colors too numerous and subtle to name. Collectively, these are called hoodoos. Okay, well why don't you tell us a little bit more about these hoodoos as they seem to be the pinnacle of the attractions to Bryce Canyon National Park and the reason why many tourists come to visit. Well, a hoodoo is a pillar of rock, usually a fantastic shape caused by erosion. And the word hoodoo means to cast a spell. Now, why did they use the word hoodoo to describe the rocks as opposed to any other word? Well, you see, for the visitors that come to Bryce Canyon National Park, the hoodoos cast a spell upon them with their oh, beauty. Oh, with the beauty. Ah, I see, I see, I see. I see. So is there anything else that can uh, form into, say, a hoodoo? <laughs> well, uh, the Pariah River forms fins when it goes through the canyon as it erodes plate the rocks around it. Right. And these fins can be eroded into pinnacles and spires, which become hoodoos. Really? Very it's true. It's true. Okay, well, we're going to take another commercial break. When we come back, we'll be discussing some more about Bryce Canyon National Park with Mr. Ebenezer Bryce, so stay tuned. All right, welcome back. We're still here with Ebenezer Bryce of Bryce Canyon National Park. What else is there to see at Bryce Canyon National Park besides the canyon and the hoodoos and stuff? Well, there's the Grand Staircase. Grand Staircase. Now, what is right. that? Well, it's uh, a series of parts of a cliff that have been eroded away that make it look like it's a staircase. And, how, and it, so it's huge then, right? Right, right. It's a very large area of the cliff that's been eroded to look like a really? staircase. Well, I think I'm going to walk up it. I, that might be a difficult task. <laughs> Why don't we discuss some of the vegetation that resides in the area? Well, there are plenty of ponderosa pines, high elevation meadows, and fir spruce forests that border the rim of the plateau. All right, well, uh, let's, we're going to take some so look at some pictures of these right now. Why don't you tell us a little bit more while we take a look at these pictures? Well, this area boasts some of the nation's best air quality. This, coupled really? with the lack of nearby large light sources, creates an unparalleled opportunities for stargazing. Oh, I love stargazing. Don't we all? <laughs> and there's actually more than 400 species that grow in the park. 
a plant life. Oh, that's really? Right. That's interesting. Well, we're going to go to our, one of our final commercial breaks, and um, when we come back, we'll be discussing the animal life in the area, and we'll be wrapping up our program on Bryce Canyon National Park, so be here for the conclusion. Welcome back to the program. Here we have Mr. Ebenezer Bryce. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, animal life that lives and resides in the area? Well, Bryce Canyon's forests and meadows support a diverse animal life, from small animals to birds, to foxes and occasional mountain lions and black bears. Really? It's got to be, be a little frightening. Uh, occasionally, occasionally. Uh, but the most common large mammal is a mule deer. Mule deer. All right, well, we're going to take a look at some pictures of these animals and while you discuss some more about them. Well, you see, the mule deer are best seen on summer mornings and evenings in roadside meadows. But do they run out the road then? Occasionally, yes. You oh, have to be a little oh bit boy. careful in the oh area. Boy. But mountain lions, the few that we have, <laughs> prey on mule deer in mutually beneficial population dynamics. So it's all right. Okay. And elks and proghorn antelope, reintroduced nearby, are sometimes seen in the park. All right, and you said that uh, the park supports bird life as well. Right, there are more than 160 species of birds. Really, that, that many? visit the park every year. That many, huh? It's true. Most bird species migrate to warmer climates, but jays, nuthatches, ravens, eagles, and owls stay here during the winter. Well, this pretty much concludes our show today on uh, Bryce Canyon National Park. So, Ebenezer, is there anything else you'd like to tell people before the time runs out on the show? Well, I'd just like to recommend my park, Bryce Canyon National Park, for all families and friends that like to go on a delightful getaway. All right, Mr. Bryce, well, thank you for coming on our program today, and best of luck to you and your uh, park. Well, that concludes our program today, and join us next week while we interview Sean Connery about his life in Wales and his explosive success in the United States.